Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have a pencil or a pen? Let's see what you know or don't know. One. This is just for your information and mine. One. What is Moses' office in office in Exodus 19 to 25? <coughs> what is Moses' office in Exodus 19 to 25? You want us to write it? Or? Yeah, I want you to write it on, on a piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, huh. But what is Moses' office in Exodus 19 to 25? Write it down. Write it down. Yes, you. <laughs> no, I won't. Is this an open book? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This is the time of trouble. There's no Bibles to be had. Yeah. You want that one? No Bibles. Yeah. What's happening now is you're taking a quiz. And number one is, what is Moses' office in Exodus 19 to 25? Are we to look at it? No, you can't. Number two, boy, well, you better get this. What chapters contain the Decalogue in the book of Exodus? What chapters contain the Decalogue in the book of Exodus? No, no, we're just going to go through it right here. I just want to see how you did. In Exodus. In Exodus. The answer to this is not Deuteronomy 5. <laughs> Yes. What chapters can... I heard one of the answers out loud, and you better stop that right now. What, what, one, what is Moses' office in Exodus 19 to 25? Two, what chapters contain the Decalogue in the book of Exodus? Three, what two views of the giving of the Decalogue are found in Exodus? Number three, what two different views of the giving of the Decalogue are found in the book of Exodus? And that's easy. Nobody better miss that after three weeks of talking about it. Number three, what two views of giving the, of the Decalogue are found in Exodus? Write it down. I know you know the answer. Yes, you do. You know the answer. You just... We're not doing this. Come on. I, pre I presume that the Lord has blessed you with great patience at this point. <laughs> Number four, what is the formal title of the Decalogue? The formal title of the Decalogue in Exodus and Deuteronomy. What's the formal title of the Decalogue in Exodus and Deuteronomy? That's an easy one. Number five, you can say this in your own words, what was the original form? What was the original form? that the Decalogue was given in. It's a little form criticism. What was the original form that the Decalogue was given in? That's an easy one too. Number six, what two types of laws are found in the Covenant Code? What two types or forms of law what two forms of law are found in the covenant code? I don't mean civil and religious, don't say that. I'm, not, I'm talking about form here. What two forms of law are given in the covenant code? That's easy too. Number seven. Get this one right, seven. From what period does most of our present covenant code originate? Number seven. From what period does most of our present current code, covenant code, originate? This is the covenant code. From what period does it mostly come as it now stands? And number eight. Let's see if you caught this. Number eight. This is for the scholars. Whose rights? I said this several times. Let's see if you got it. Whose rights did the Lex Talionis law protect? The Lex Talionis. Whose rights did the Lex Talionis law protect? Let's see if you caught that. <laughs> did I catch you? No? Oh, too bad. All right. Oh, all right. <laughs> Number nine. This is just because we're Adventists. Number nine. State three different motivating clauses 
for, for Sabbath observance given in Exodus. Three different motivating clauses for Sabbath observance given in Exodus. That's easy because there are lots more than three. Let's see if you can remember at least one that is not found in Exodus 20. Try to find one that is not stated in Exodus 20. And number 10, oh, this is really pushing it now. Number 10, give one commandment of the second Decalogue that differs from the first. Hint, the Sabbath isn't one of them. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Okay, we done? How many know they got them all right? Know it? <laughs> What's the answer to number one? What is Moses' office in Exodus 19 to 25? No. No, not prophet. No, not judge. Ah. No, but the priest is closer. Two words, covenant, mediator. Covenant mediator. Who got it right? All right, that's one that we'll start and ask again later. What, what is Moses' office in Exodus 19 to 25? Covenant mediator. This is the making of the covenant, right? Wasn't God also revealing things to him so that wouldn't that pass by his prophet? No, there's a technical reason for saying mediator that we'll come to later. <coughs> Did anybody miss what two chapters contain the Decalogue in Exodus? What are they? 20 and 34. Did you get it? Good. Good. Now, uh, what I want to know is, after all your complaining, your bitter complaining, if you got number three, what two views of giving of the Decalogue are found in Exodus? One view is, what? The law was given to Moses, or what? The law was given to, so law was given to all Israel. Yes. Right? Either the law was given privately to Moses, and that's who I meant. You missed the quiz. <laughs> Either the law was given to Moses privately, alone, or the law was given to all Israel, and they all heard it at once. What's the formal title of the Decalogue? The Ten Words. That's right. I see you got that too. Huh? What was the original form of the Decalogue? What? Single words that were what? Negative single words. Okay. Negative single words. Do you remember? What did you ask for? You asked for the ten words. You asked for the ten words. Okay. And after you're done with the ten words, just pass them around. Let everybody look at it. They're the ten words which tradition has brought down to us from. Of course, the ten words as single words aren't represented in the Bible, are they? So really, that's the work of rabbinic Judaism in deciding which words must have been the words by looking at all the different forms of, say, the Sabbath commandment and determining which word appears consistently. Okay? And they arrived at the ten words. Well, for, Well, I think you can you can figure it out just by looking at the Ten Commandments, what the Ten Words are. We could go through that. No, that's okay. Of course, she's been here the week we did. Yeah, she, I did. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. All right. So the original form of the Decalogue was ten negative words. What two forms of law are found in the Covenant Code? Apodictic and casuistic. Absolutely. Quickly state what apodictic is. <coughs> Broad principles, unrelated to time and place. What's casuistic? It's case law that states the case. If then, if then. This is where predictive prophecy came from. It came from casuistic law. If you do this, then this will happen. Since you have done this, therefore this will happen. That's where predictive prophecy came from in our classical prophets. Okay, 
So if then is case law. Did you get this, number seven, from what period does most of our present covenant code originate? Started with Moses, Exodus says so, but that's not where the covenant code comes from that we have in, in there now. Where does it come from, most of it? Judges. Yes, Judges. What, what period of the Judges? Early or late? No. Early, they're just trying to find out what you do with property. Uh, if I had attached a name to it, what name would I have attached to it? Joshua. Joshua, yes. Okay, number eight. First of all, let's figure out what Lex Italian means. Huh? Lex, of course, is the Latin word for law of the eye. What is this referring to? An eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. That law, the covenant code. A new principle in law that brought in, we said, in the code of Eshnuna, in the code of Hammurabi, and also in the code here, whose rights did it protect that normally didn't have rights up to that point? Slaves, non-landowners, non-citizens. This protected the slave, who up to that point wasn't a person. In other words, this was a more liberal law and we safeguarded the rights of people who before this didn't have any rights. All right. Three motivating clauses for reasons of, for Sabbath observance in Exodus. What are some of them? Creation. Creation, that's the obvious one. Yes. Everything needs rest. Yes, yes. Well, I also took the first one, remember. Remember. Well, what do you do remember? You remember to observe, but why? Uh, rest. To, because the animals need rest because your slaves need rest, uh, because it's a feast holy to Yahweh, therefore you've got to hold a solemn assembly, in other words, so you can have a religious, so you can go to church. That's one of the reasons given. Uh, so that you can be refreshed, uh, because God rested. Okay. All right. Now then, let's see, what are some others? Give one commandment of the second Decalogue that differs from the first. That's oh, that's the easy one. I thought everybody would get that. Don't boil a kid in his... That's number 10, isn't it? That's the last one. Don't boil a kid in his, cu in, in his mother's milk. Which, um, you know, was a sacrifice to demons, and we can understand why I said that. Um, yeah, that's right. The three times in the year, that I would remember right away. And the, and the week, Feast of Weeks and First Fruits and so forth. Don't offer the blood of sacrifice with any leaven. That's an interesting one. Bring the first fruits to the ground and don't boil a kid in his mother's milk. That's, those are fun ones. Okay. What role, what office did Moses occupy in Exodus 19 to 25? Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Covenant mediator. 